हरे रामा हरे रामा राम राम हरे I see some persons present tonight that weren't with us yesterday. And this is part two. So I think I need to do a little review of part one. In fact, I'll even go back a little bit before review of part one and do the context of part one. <clears throat> Canto 1, Chapter 7 is the beginning of Vyasadev having heard from his spiritual master Narada Muni the cause of his feeling insufficiency. Now, if anybody's a little introspective, of course, if you're not introspective, you won't pick up on this. But if you're a little introspective, you'll also feel something. There's something missing. That little pinch in the heart that says, I'm not quite right. And that's Vyas, what to speak of us. I'll say it again. That's Vyas, what to speak of us. <laughs> he just, he's Trikalagya, meaning he can see past, present, future perfectly. We can't even see what's in front of our face perfectly, but he can see past, present, future perfectly. Perfectly. He's an empowered incarnation of the Supreme Lord. They looked into the future and he saw Kali Yuga is right around the corner. And he knew what the symptoms or features of Kali Yuga are. And he didn't feel good about it. I mean, it wasn't about himself, it was about all the living entities in the universe they're going to have to go through another Kali Yuga. What to do? But he knew what to do because he's a literary incarnation. So what he did was he took the Vedas. This is like a summary of chapter 6. He took the Vedas, which were in sound vibration form, and put them in a written form because one of the symptoms of the age of Kali Bad memory. Something I learned early in the Hare Krishna movement. If you want to remember something, write it down. If you want to forget something, don't write it down. So he wrote, he, he not only compiled the Vedas, but he divided the Vedas into four to make it convenient for the brahmanas to select the, the mantras according to the particular purpose to be served by the mantras. Rigsama Yajurveda, Atharva Veda, then to help understand the four Vedas, the corollary literature or the smriti literature or the supplementary literature, the histories and Puranas and Itihasa of Mahabharata, and then took everything, put it in nice little sutra form, Brahma Sutra. And he stepped back. How did it come out? You know, if you're cooking the Sunday feast or you're painting a painting or you're singing the bhajan for the... How did it come out? Natural. It's natural. So he, how did it come out? So he sat back look, to look at the work that he had just completed and he felt some dissatisfaction. Huh. Pinch in the heart. What's that? So he began pondering, well, where's, the, where's the source of that feeling? Insufficiency, something's not right. His spiritual master, Narada Muni, has an uncanny ability to know when to come in for a landing at the right time and say the right things and make everything nice. So Narada Muni zoomed in. Hey, Vyas, you don't look so good. What's up? <laughs> you know, didn't say what's up. 
I don't know. I have this feeling, but why that feeling? I don't know. But you're like the super soul. You must know. So can you tell me what, why am I feeling this feeling? So Nard explained. You got an A in your exam, but you got an F in terms of the purpose of all that work. The pur main purpose, not an F, but you have insufficiently given a focus on the absolute truth, supreme personality of Godhead. So two things. This is the end of chapter six, instruction-wise. I mean, we read some verse from that end section based upon recommendation that it's, it includes essences. And it basically, he's describing the goal of life and the means to achieve it, or sadhya and sadhana. Those nice words. Sadhana, the means to achieve the goal, sadhana, sadhya. So sit down in trance, completely absorbed in trance on the absolute truth, part one. Part two, whatever you experience, whatever you realize, whatever reciprocation from, from Krishna comes to you, that should be the subject matter of your next literature, and conclusive literature. So that's what he did. So the reason I selected these verses to be there, starting with text four, we'll quickly summarize text four. Four, five, six, seven. These four verses are the realization of Vyasa upon which the other 17,996 verses are written. They're expanding those four. It's the foundation upon which the whole of the Srimad Bhagavatam is in expansion. So that's their essence verses. So it's, they're important. That's why we selected them. And yesterday, we discussed text four. And text four reads, does anybody remember? Anybody have a, you know, better than a Kali Yuga memory can remember what the verse is? The Sanskrit, Bhakti Yoga and Manasi. Does anyone know the verse? Okay, here's the verse. Bhakti Yoga na Manasi, Samyak Pranihate Male, Apashat Purusham Purnam, Mayam Chatad Apashrayam. So the first is what he did, Bhakti Yoga na Manasi. He gave his mana, his mind, in Samyak means complete, completely, perfectly absorbed his mind in bhakti yoga. Amale, without any touch of matter. He was, he was, he was in samadhi. That's what he did. And then, this, then he, he, it describes what he saw because the instruction of Narada was in that first line, sit in meditation, trance in meditation, and then what you experience, that should be the foundation basis of your special literature, the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's the basis of Srimad Bhagavatam. So, Apashat Purusham Purnam. Apashat, he saw Purusham Purnam. Purnam. Purusha Purna. Purna Purusha. Purusha Purnam. The, the supreme, the complete whole, the complete supreme person, he saw his form, and he understood what he was seeing, the fullness of that from which everything comes is a person, you know, the absolute truth. The absolute truth is a person. Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. The absolute truth is Bhagavan. It's a supreme person. Apashat Purusham Purnam, and then he, then he also saw Mayam Cha, Tad Apashrayam, Tad Apashrayam, under his full control, Apashraya, under his full control or shelter was Maya. So there's the Lord and his energy. That's, that's what we discussed yesterday. I mean, there's nice purport, but we'll just, that's the first verse of these 
four verses. So now, uh, what we did yesterday, I don't know if we're going to do it t today. Many of you know how to use your little phone or handheld device of some kind or another, and you can look up the verse, 1.7.5. If you don't know how to do that, just listen, and we'll s say the verse. Yaya samohito jiva Atmanam trigunatmakam Paropi manyute nartam Tad kritam chabi padyate Pretty good. One more time. Yaya samohito jiva Atmanam trimunatrakam Paropi manyate nartam Tatkritam chabi padyate Due to the external energy, the living entity, Paropi, although transcendental to the three modes of material nature, Trigunatmakam, he thinks, himself, thinks of himself as a material product and thus undergoes the reactions of material miseries. I hope you're patient because the purport is almost three pages long. To an Almost three pages. I'll read it slowly. The root cause of suffering by the materialistic living beings is pointed out with remedial measures which are to be undertaken and also the ultimate perfection to be gained. So that's what the verse is speaking All this is mentioned in this particular verse, the living being is by constitution transcendental to material engagement, but he is now imprisoned by the external energy and therefore he thinks himself one of the material products. And due to this unholy contact, contact the pure spiritual entity suffers material miseries under the modes of material nature, the living entity misunderstands himself to be a material product. This means that the present perverted way of thinking, feeling, and willing under material conditions is not natural for him. Like a diseased condition. Unnatural. But he has his normal way of thinking, feeling, and willing. The living being in his original state is not without thinking, feeling, willing, and feeling power. It is also confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita that the actual knowledge of the conditioned soul is now covered by nescience. Thus, the theory that a living being is absolute, impersonal Brahman is refuted herein. It cannot be because the living entity has his own way of thinking in his original unconditional state also. The present conditional state is due to the influence of the external energy, which means that the illusory energy takes the initiative while the Supreme Lord is aloof. The Lord does not desire that a living being be illusioned by external energy. The external energy is aware of this fact, but still she accepts a thankless task of keeping the forgotten soul under illusion by her bewildering influence. There's many details, but I'll just keep reading. I'll, I'll say one detail. Pratpekshatmika and Avaranatmika. Fancy Sanskrit terms. One means the potency of Maya to cast a living entity or throw the living entity into a covered condition, and the other is to keep the living entity there. 
double whammy. And as long as the living entity continues to identify with material energy, it stays under the whammy. Struggle, complain, whine, blame, jump off a bridge. <laughs> it stays like that. Therefore, it's imperative. It's in the verse, it's in Bhagavad Gita, but it's in here also. It's important to, the, the first lesson of Bhagavad Gita is to know who you are. Read Prabhupada's books regularly, or hear his recorded lectures regularly, or both, and you'll hear it so many times, the light's got to go on, say, got it. <laughs> know who you are. Because if you, if you don't have an under, proper understanding of who you are, you can't do the rest of the math. You make a mistake in the beginning of a calculation, the whole calculation is off. You got to go back to so the very beginning. Who are you? Have any of you been to Los Angeles? the L.A. Temple. When you go there next time, go to the museum. It was The museum was created under Prabhupada's instruction because there were a number of devotees that were very talented artists. So one of the things he wanted them to do was create, he called it dolls because I think that's what there's something like that is... is and what nomenclature in, in India, using very simple uh, skill, make figures that depict something. And then, so like one of the scenes is Krishna with the, the, the cows and the cowherd boys. So and then there's this voice that you get the light that comes on, and you can see that Krishna and the cowherd boys. And the voice says, what's, what's going on over there? This is Krishna's natural abode. This is just visual, experiential sound. It's, it's, it, 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 the experience is a nice experience. So that one of the very first exhibits is you're not the body. And <clears throat> when you go into the museum, it's, you know, it's all digitally controlled. It di didn't work for a while until somebody figured out how to get the digital technology to work again. So you go in, you're in a museum, and you feel like you're in India because the lights go out. And everyone's like, you know, it's completely dark, completely dark. And then there's a sound. It's a sound of a heartbeat. It's a heartbeat, and then you hear a voice, and some light starts to go on, and you the, the light that goes on is a little a, ch a child in the womb, a little embryo in the womb. And it's a spotlight. So that you can see there's other figures, but this the spotlight is on that one. And then oh, before that, there's mylar mirrors. What's mylar mirror? A mirror that and, the, and in one circumstance it's transparent, in other circumstance it's a mirror. You can see through it if the light is a certain way, and otherwise it's a mirror. So there's the mirror, the light goes on as a mirror, and the voice says Take a good look at yourself. Who are you, really? Are you that body? You know, British dignified voice saying all these things. And then the, the light changes, and you can see through the, through the mirror, and you can see the little embryo, and you hear the thud, thud. So it's, it's the child is in the womb. And then there's a the light. And then that light goes out, the spotlight shifts, and then it's the little baby, and you hear the little baby cry. 
still thud, thud. And then little boy bouncing a ball. The spotlight moves. So the transmigration of the soul. You hear the bouncing of some kids giggling and laughing and bouncing a ball. And then the next picture, he's standing there with a book in his hand. He's going to school, etc. You know, it goes through the whole thing. And then at the end, it's the, the old man leaning over backwards, coughing, coughing, coughing. And then the light goes out. On the, there's a light on, on the chest of each of these figures. And then it shows the light then shifts the, where the light is illuminated goes back to living entity within the womb. Of course, there's no guarantee we're going to take a human birth next, but it's describing, we, you know, that the, the 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 narrator explains we're not really the body. There's these the soul where the soul that's moving from this to that to that. The soul is unchanging. The body is ever changing, and we're the unchanging soul. Back to the purport. In order to have God realization, it's necessary to understand what we are and what we aren't. Or the healthy condition, the diseased condition. The diseased condition is a thinking who we're not and trying to find happiness in the arena of who we're not. The Lord does not desire that a living being be illusioned by external energy. The external energy is aware of this fact, but still, she accepts the thankless task of keeping the forgotten soul under illusion by bewildering by her bewildering influence. The Lord does not interfere with the task of the illusory energy because such performances of the illusory energy are necessary for reformation of the conditioned soul. Then he gives a, a, a standard example. An affectionate father does not like his children to be chastised by another agent, yet he sometimes puts his disobedient children under the custody of a severe man just to bring them to order. But the all-affectionate, almighty father at the same time desires relief for the conditioned soul, relief from the clutches of the illusory energy. The king puts the disobedient citizens within the walls of the jail, but sometimes the king, desiring the prisoner's relief, personally goes there, pleads for reformation, and on his doing so, the prisoners are set free. Doesn't happen too often. Similarly, the Supreme Lord descends from his kingdom upon the kingdom of the illusory energy and personally gives relief in the form of Bhagavad Gita, wherein he personally suggests that although the ways of the illusory energy are very stiff to overcome, what's the Bhagavad Gita verse? Daivahiyesha gunamayi mamamaya dorachaya mame vaye prapadyante maya metam tarantite. You all know the verse. If you don't, you will. Stick around. The surrendering process is completed by the influence of association. The Lord has suggested, therefore, that by the influence of the speeches of saintly persons who have actually realized the Supreme, men are engaged in His transcendent loving service. The conditioned soul gets a taste for hearing about the Lord and by such hearing only he is gradually elevated to the platform of respect devotion and attachment for the Lord the whole thing is completed by the surrendering process herein also the same suggestion is made by the Lord in his incarnation of Vyasadeva now this is Vyasadeva's compilation, Srimad Bhagavatam, but it's also his realization. He's seeing and he's telling us what he's seen. This means that the conditioned souls are being reclaimed by the Lord both ways, namely by the process of punishment, by the external energy of the Lord, and by himself as the spiritual master within and without. 
within the heart of every living being, the Lord himself, as the Suprasoul Paramatma, becomes the spiritual master, and from without, he becomes the spiritual master in the shape of scriptures, saints, and the initiator, spiritual master. This is still more explicitly explained in the next sloka. I'm going to stop reading for a bit. We'll discuss. Many of us, most of us, are really busy trying to be successful. And the model of what is successful it varies a little bit, but there are certain principles, common principles. There's, a, there's others and others and others, but common principles are, especially you know, the, the, the general community of people, you know, do well in school. Because it shows something about your ability to be a, a good person and a good worker and understand things and so forth. And you keep doing well in school and doing well in school and doing, doing well in school. And in course of time, the expectation is you'll graduate. And when you graduate, then you have an opportunity to find a job. And when you have an opportunity to find a job, sometimes you find a job. And when you find a job, then you have some money. We have some money. Then you can enjoy it's called fruitive work. You, you do something to get something. Now, it's not necessarily that the young person who is in school is thinking, I want to get money. It's just the ethic of, you know, be smart, do well, because that's what you're supposed to do. You, you know, if you're a wholesome person, you're smart and you do well in school. You achieve. And there's, there's, there's a carrot. Besides, you, know, you get a pat on the back and some recognition and all those nice things. It gets you, it, 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 it's, it's fruitive, in short. And it's a nice standard. It's one of the What was that? Okay, anyway. It's one of the fruits of piety. Fruits of piety. They're, 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 fruits of piety are identified in Queen Quinty's prayers. Four. Janma, good birth. Aishwarya, wealth. Shruta, good education. Shri, beauty. She says, that's a problem. You start to become intoxicated with the, being the enjoyer of the fruits of piety. And the spirit of Sub submission and service to the Supreme Lord somehow gets side hijacked. You start becoming more interested in being the enjoyer of the fruits of piety than being in, in, absorbed in your relationship with the Supreme and using those fruits of piety for his service. I mean, many, most of us here, we're, we're, we're practicing devotees because we understand, we don't, don't go all the way over this way, but we're not all the way over that way either. We're in this mixed, generally speaking. And the advocacy isn't trash it or give it a bad name and dump it. The idea is recognize what it is and use it in the right way. With the, with the booty, with the intelligence that it's not mine, it belongs to the person who it comes from. And where does everything come from? The absolute truth. So I forget all that when there's yaya samohito jiva atmanam trigonatmakam, what the verse is saying. Paropi, although para api, although I'm transcendental, I forget. Enamored by trying to be the enjoyer of that external energy. It's it's a it's it's a two way street. It's not a one way street. We're not. It's not forced upon us. We can 
we can become free from that illusion, not on our own, but with in relate. It's all in relation to Krishna. If our regard for Krishna is what it should be, if we're in the healthy instead of the disease state, it's not a problem. If we're in the disease state in different degrees of disease, it's a problem. Yaya samohito jiva. Atmanam trigunatmakam. Although we're of the spiritual nature, we're under the influence of the three modes. And we're identifying with it. And it's a rough ride. Even if the waves are going up, it's a rough ride because in time the, the wave that's up is going to not be up anymore. It's just the nature of how the material energy moves. Two more paragraphs. Personal superintendence of the illusory energy is confirmed in the Vedas, Kena Upanishad, in relation to the demigods' controlling power. Herein also it is clearly stated that the living entity is controlled by the external energy in a personal capacity. The living being, thus subject to the control of the external energy, is differently situated. It is clear, however, from the present statement of the Bhagavatam that the same external energy is situated in the inferior position before the personality of Godhead or the perfect being. Did you get that one? Tadapashrayam, that's from the previous. The, 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 the illusory energy from the text four is Tad Aparsham. It's under his full control. So supposing we don't see the Supreme Lord because in between us and the Supreme Lord is the illusory energy. But if the Supreme Lord sees we really want to see him and be connected with him, he can indicate illusory energy, please go behind me. Why? So that my devotee can see me. I want to reveal myself and please step aside. Now that same illusory energy is there, just, just commenting on the topography in St. Louis is very interesting. You know, most, I've, most of the Midwest is just this flat thing. St. Louis has got lots of up and down. Ooh, without deep, you, know, you live here, so there's there, there's different s situations within the field of the material energy. Some like it this way, some like it that way. The weather's been crazy too. You know, s snow, and then seventy degrees, and then you know cold again, and then thunderstorms, and like, what's next? <laughs> very unpre unpredictable. But that's the, that's the illusory energy. So now, I want, if I have, my disposition is, I want a healthy state, spiritually healthy state. So th that's, that's Vyas. And Nard is giving him the instruction, fix your mind, and what you realize. So he's realizing, he's seeing the living entity, he's seeing the, the jiva, He's seeing the illusory energy. He's seeing the Supreme Lord. And they're, they're the mix. He's able to see all that because he fixed his mind upon the Supreme Lord. And that's, you know, not, there's not a, it doesn't happen by mechanical. You can try, but it doesn't happen by mechanical. It happens by devotional. That's our particularly are a very important instruction that's mentioned in Bhagavad Gita, Daibhyeshu Gunamai, Mama Maya Durajaya, Mama Eva Ye Prapadyante, Maya Metam Durantite. One can easily cross beyond it. Mama Eva Ye Prapadyante, Maya Metam Durantite. You know, the, the verse, it, it's, it's easy, it's nice, it's fun, it's important to unpack. In the commentary of our, I'm going to read a little bit from Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's commentary. It's nice. It's not really long, but it's insightful. Last paragraph. Where did I 
stop. It is sheer imagination that the Supreme Lord is illusioned by the illusory energy and thus becomes a living being? If the living being and the Lord were in the same category, then it would have been quite possible for Vyasadeva to see it, and there would have been no question of material distress on the part of the illusioned being, for the Supreme Being is fully cognizant. So, there are so many unscrupulous imaginations on the part of the monist to endeavor to put both the Lord and the living being in the same category. Had the Lord and the living beings been the same, then Shukadeva Goswami would not have taken the trouble to describe the transcendental pastimes of the Lord, for they would all be manifestations of the illusory energy. Paragraph. It's a long purport, but it's nice. Shimad Bhagavatam is the summum bonum, nice Latin word, totality, the last word, complete, summum bonum. Remedy for suffering humanity in the clutches of Maya. So read it again. Shimad Bhagavatam is the summum bonum remedy for suffering humanity in the clutches of Maya. So what's happening is Narada's given instruction to Vyasa. Vyasa's followers' instructions and Archaryas are making commentary what's going on here. It's not just so that he can feel satisfied instead of dissatisfied. He wants to do a service for living entities that are victimized or on the receiving end of the hardships of Kali Yuga. He wants to do something about it. And the something to do about it is the sound vibration of the Vedas and, and t t taken in a written form because people forget. Some of you may know this <coughs> anecdote. Some of you may know that I've um, been spending some time uh, developing a, a nice, readable, understandable presentation of Sri Brahma Samhita because I find Bhakti Siddhanta's presentation, besides its superb, his language is formidable. It's hard to penetrate it. As Prabhupada says, my brain was puzzled. So I was having a discussion with a god brother about three days ago. And he said, when I was younger in devotional service, I had memorized the entire Sri Brahma Samhita. They said the, the Govinda prayers? He said, no, the entire Sri Brahma Samhita. But when, if you don't lose it, you, if you don't use it, you lose it because it's Kali Yuga. But if you do something every day and every day and every day, be, as Prabhupada recommended, specifically in the Bhagavatam, specifically about Sri Brahma Samhita, to enter into the spirit of the hymn, Anyway, he, had, you know, he recited a few verses and then he couldn't go much further. But if you, if you hear the sound vibration of the Bhagavatam on a regular basis, something happens. What's that something that happens? Two somethings happen. One, the covering of maya becomes diminished, eventually finished. Second, the original consciousness of the soul becomes awakened. Read Srimad Bhagavatam regularly. And if you do that, the world around you will not necessarily change, but the way that you experience the world around you will change. Clear? Should I say it again? The world around you may not change. Kali Yuga is going to still progress. But your experience of stuff, of the world, of time and the material energy and yourself and other souls and relationships and reality with a capital R, it's going to change. How? Just hear this transcendental message. Because the basis of the transcendental message of Srimad Bhagavatam is in these verses. It was specifically, explicitly, Nara's instruction, do this 
that I'm asking you to do, you'll get some realization, which we're hearing, and then compose a literature that's expanding on that. And, you, and if we hear it, it's, it's in yesterday's purport also. It is sheer imagination of the Supreme Lord is illusioned by the illusory energy. Oh, we did read that. Srimad Bhagavatam, yeah, here we are. Srimad Bhagavatam is a summa bonum remedy for suffering humanity in the clutches of Maya. Srila Vyasadeva, therefore, first of all, diagnosed the actual disease of the conditioned souls. Namely, they're being illusioned by the external energy. He also saw the supreme being from whom the illusory energy is far removed, though he saw both the diseased conditioned souls and also the cause of the disease. And the remedial measures are suggested in the next verse. Almost done. Both the supreme personality of Godhead and the living beings are undoubtedly qualitatively one, but the Lord is the controller of the illusory energy, whereas the living entity is controlled by the illusory energy. Thus, the Lord and the living beings are simultaneously one and different. Another point is distinct herein. What's that other point? That eternal relation between the Lord and the living being is transcendental. Otherwise, the Lord would not have taken the trouble to reclaim the conditioned souls from the clutches of Maya. In the same way, the living entity is also required to revive his natural love and affection for the Lord, and that is the highest perfection of the living entity. Srimad Bhagavatam treats the conditioned soul with an aim to that goal of life. I know a, a few people that are in medical school, and I think one of them is in the room. And in medical school, it's like, it's arduous. It's, it's very taxing. And why? We, you know, that there, there's many reasons why. Part of the reasons why is when, the, when you're in a, a profession of a doctor, you gotta be ready for anything at any time 24-7. So it's, it's an ordeal just to get there so that you can handle the ordeal when you're there. But if you're going to treat a disease, you have to know the nature of the disease. And that's what Vishwanath Chakrabarti Thakur is saying about this purport. If, if you know, know thyself. I'm creating a, a, a little presentation for George Mason University. You know, there's a lot of new people, I was told, so you know, they want a 101 class. So the, the topic is, who are you? There's a very nice, one of the slides is going to be, a, there's, it's an audio recording. It's a radio interview of New York Post interviewing Srila Prabhupada saying something basically like this. Swamiji, you came all the way from India to this country. You must be carrying a message for the people of this country. What's that message? Pause. Prabhupada, know yourself. Pause. Deep, the, the, the interviewer's voice got deeper. Know yourself. Prabhupada, know yourself. Like, really simple. And then you can expand, what does that mean? Because you can't go to step two if you're, go, if you're not at step one. And, you, and please, get step one correct, because if you don't get step one correct, try to go to step two, and it's going to be off. And then step three and step four. So the, the introduction to Bhagavad Gita is to know yourself, who, who you aren't and who you are.
Here, another one, same. I like this story. I wasn't there. I heard this from Sassur Maharaj. Uh, in the beginning of the Hare Krishna movement at 26 Second Avenue, three nights of the week, in the evenings, there was Kirtan, Bhagavad Gita, Kirtan Prasadam. Everyone was happy. And after some time, more people came, and after some time, that they started dancing towards the second kirtan. And it got really, you know, lively, really lively. And so the person in charge of that 26th Avenue storefront program was Brahmananda, big devotee, you know, physically a big devotee. And he, then he one time asked Prabhupada, is it okay? It's so nice. Can we take this chanting and dancing into the public? Prabhupada, I was waiting for you to ask that. <laughs> Let's go into the public, but please get a permit because we don't want to have any problems. So they got a permit, Tompkins Square Park. So they went in procession from 26th Second Avenue to Tompkins Square Park, celebrated events, sat under this big elm tree and in a circle, and they chanted. And in the course of time, there are many people to see what the heck is this? This guy from Mars, what's he doing? Never seen anything like it. And the devotees were chanting nicely, and then after some time dancing, and then the, the crowd got bigger and bigger from, for three hours. They, that's, they just chanted. Finally, Prabhupada stood up. The chanting stopped. He stood up. It's like, the man from outer space is going to speak. What's he going to say? I wasn't there, but I was, you know, because like, that was the ambience. Prabhupada, in a very poised gesture with his hands folded in front of him, the big church standing, you know, pictured, in the, you've seen the picture, the photograph behind him. Prabhupada's words from Satsurup Maharaj, who was there, I have not come to teach something new. I have simply come to remind you of what you have forgotten. Pretty cool, huh? I mean, supposing, close your eyes and imagine you're in the process of becoming a world acharya. You have the mandate from a pure devotee to do this service, and you're going to give your first public address, and the first public address is that one. I, 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 it resonates with me. I've not come to teach something new. I've simply come to remind you of what you've forgotten. What you've forgotten is who we are. And the means to awaken that forgetfulness into remembrance is cleansing. The cleansing is the first part, chitta darpana marginum, cleansing, just by sound. You know, it's before people can, can hear and understand Bhagavad Gita, they have to have some purification. <laughs> You know, on this end, the kirtan, and that end, prasadam. And in between is some Bhagavad Gita. Not too much, you know, with intoxicated young people. Now, this is a different audience, but it, it, the, the, the kirtan is at the beginning. And some speaking, I probably have said enough already, but I, I wanted to say one more thing, and that's <coughs> one of our great acharyas, Let's do this. Bhagavad Gita has been commented upon by many, many, many stalwart personalities over the times. And the, the most important commentaries to read are the commentaries in Disciplic Succession because there's others that they don't have the same electricity or potency. They're not charged. So, Two principal commentators Prabhupada drew upon when he made his Bhagavad Gita commentary, Baladev Vidyabhusan and Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. Prabhupada had dedicated his Bhagavad Gita commentary to Baladev Vidyabhusan because he drew heavily upon Baladev Vidyabhusan, of course, in his own words, but the, the, the essence of the message. And where did, who, where did Baladev Vidyabhusan hear from? Vishwanath Chakravarti. 
when you start reading commentaries, I'll, I'll, I'll clue you in. You're going to like Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. He's, he's sweet. His, he is sweet and his messages are sweet and he wants you to taste that which is sweet. So just take this, this verse from Srimad Bhagavatam and here's his commentary. It's really short. In order to describe the sweetness of the Lord's form, qualities, and pastimes, one needs to see the Lord. Paragraph. But what was the purpose of Vyasa seeing Maya? This verse explains, because that was the previous verse. He saw Maya. How can the jiva, afflicted by the material disease, naturally taste the sweetness which is necessary for beginning to learn Bhagavatam. Paragraph. There can be no prescription for the cure without first seeing the disease. Without that, how can the patient be treated with proper medicine and food? Thus, it is necessary to see both Maya and the Jiva. Bewildered by the covering and bewildering potencies of Maya upon his Swarup, spiritual form, the jiva, though separate from the three gunas, paropi manyate, although transcendental, trigun atmanam, trigun atmakam, bewildered by the three gunas, he thinks himself made of matter and accepts material existence, a body created by that identification. It's an assessment, it's a doctor's assessment of the disease. It's the realization of Vyas that he then expands within the whole of Srimad Bhagavatam. So it's, it's really good to know what he's expanding from. What's his diagnosis of our situation and the remedy? He saw it all. It's not like he didn't know. <laughs> he's, a, you know, a freshman in, in, in school. He knows, but now it's like indelible. This is Narada's instructions to me, and I, you know, I I want the living entities. I want the living entities who are suffering and struggling in in this age of Kali to be able to see the Supreme Lord, and and be happy, and, if, and Vishwanath's words experience the sweetness, but first that living entity, not experiencing the sweetness and seeing his form has to know the disease and the diagnosis for the disease. And thus there's this mention specifically in these essential verses that seeing Maya, but under Maya is under his control. So under Parama Purusha, supreme control, or Purusham Purnam, supreme control. So there's two more verses, and I'm not going to be here tomorrow. But you have your Bhagavatams. You all have little tele the phone, and the phone can get you there too. The digital vedabase.com can take you to any verse in Prabhupada's books. So I encourage you to read verses six and seven at your leisure. So you know these are the foundational verses of one way of looking at the foundational verses of the entire Srimad Bhagavatam. Let's see if there's some discussion. There he is, the magical boy with the microphone. <laughs> You intimidate people the way you walk around like that. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. This is just a comment. Uh, after we discussed the previous verse, I was also wondering why Vyasadeva was looking, uh, when he sat for meditation, fixed up his mind, he saw a Supreme Personality of Godhead along with the external energy. 
So I was wondering today why external energy when he was already having a vision of spirit, you know, supreme personality of Godhead. In the commentary you read now from Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur explained yes. that he wanted to have the diagnosis first. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, thank you, Guru Maharaj. And a, a, a second, I mentioned it yesterday, but we don't see the Supreme Lord because in between us, our vision, and the object, there's something in the way. And that's the illusory energy. So under his full control, specifically in some commentaries, it says, behind him. Under his full control, yes, but specifically behind him. Behind him. Because we can't see if it's in front of him or in between our vision and the object of vision. So he called, the, okay, Maya, come, come over here so Vyas can see me. Like Thank that. You. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. You're not Hanuman, I can tell. Hanuman would just jump over everybody. And... Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, sorry Maharaj, this is very basic question. No. Uh. Okay. You got help from, from, from friends. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Excuse me for my ignorance. This is very basic question. Just a okay. couple is of great. questions. A uh, couple of questions I have. So, uh, one question is yes, uh, uh, because of this jealous or angry, whenever we are getting, maybe we are able to recognize that, okay, these are because of these uh, material modes or body, and we are getting all those. But, uh, Still, those will come automatically whenever some situations. But we are identifying them at that moment. I mean, after that moment, and uh, we are bypassing. But how can we completely avoid or come out of that situation? <laughs> Means what I'm asking is maybe. No, I got it. Yeah, thank you. I'm smiling. I'm not bewildered. I'm smiling. <laughs> Your question is spot on with this verse. There's the disease, and then there's the f relief from the disease. So the disease is identification with the covering, or identification with prakriti, or identification with the illusory energy. And it's because of the identification with the illusory energy and our, what's back there, the prior involvement with this and that and the other mode and mixture of modes, the modes tendency conditions us to experience X, Y, Z. And then it, then it moves because like water, it moves and waves. And so sometimes we're experiencing this and sometimes we're experiencing that. And it's just the illusory energy. So... Why? It's because of our identification with it. And it's the, the, the flip side is forgetfulness of who we really are. So now how to get out of it? That's what you're, it's right in the verse. It's, you know, samyak praniyate amale. So you, if, you're, if you or me or any one of us, all of us, can practice what Narada, Narada has advised Vyas to do, Samyak praniyate amale. So it, it takes a while to get to samyak praniyate amale, to get to the stage where the mind is not flickering. Say it negative. As long as the mind is flickering, we're not going to stay fixed because we identify with the mind. The covering. Souls have, souls have minds. There's thinking, feeling, and willing on the spiritual platform of the soul, but it's not a, the covering type. The covering type is there because of identifying ourselves as separate from enjoyers, competitor enjoyers, or independent enjoyers. 
So that's the why, and then then the, the what to do. You sadhana, you practice, and you practice, and you practice. Uh, you practice, don't you? Of course. Yes, Maharaj. Say practice. Okay, I'm identifying because, of course, previous in the previ in the previously we are not able to identify that we are in angry and we might be in some time in that mode. But now we are identifying that okay, we are in angry mode and we need to come out. But we cannot able to avoid to get that angry though. But yeah, that if if when the, when the covering becomes pu when you the soul becomes purified then you no longer identify. Uh, same thing that I said before. The material energy is going to still be the material energy. Supposing you're now a purified soul. You took a while to get there, but you're a purified soul. The material energy is still doing its thing. But you're not moved by it. How's that? Because I'm identifying with who I am instead of the illusory energy. The illusory energy is doing its thing. It's, you know, it's the same weather for all of us. So that how you how you respond to that circumstance is going to be dependent upon how much you identify with yourself versus how much you identify with the illusory energy through the medium of our dear friend Paul Seiko. So is there's a rem, there's a, there's a disease and there's the remedy for the disease. So follow the remedy, however long it takes you. Just keep following the remedy. Take the right medicine on a, on, on, a, on a regular basis. Good medicine taken on a regular basis with, with proper diagnosis by a good physician. That's what, that's what you should do. It's Don't say yeah, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maharaj, yeah, the medicine is just for regular practice and as you always mentioned, sadhu sangha. Uh -huh. Right, Maharaj? But I have s sadhu sangha I have a very basic thing like how we can utilize the sadhu sangha means say of course we are all you, you do association. two things you do with sadhus what sadhus do what do sadhus do bhajana kriya kriya means activity bhajana kriya you come together with sadhu or sadhus and you do bhajana kriya. And there's another thing you can do in that connection with sadhus, and you, you want to serve them. Best to try to serve them in on terms that they want. Small thing. But that's that's love. You want to give something to someone, give something that it's going to be meaningful. But supposing you don't know what's meaningful, you just want to do some service. So from your heart, you do some service. I'm going to give a little example. Once upon a time, I traveled. <laughs> and I uh, was on, it was an international flight, and I arrived at the airport at, you know, early, early, early in the morning because it was an international flight and I was kind of like upside down. My bo my bodily airs were upside down, very unclean. So I went, you know, at two or three o'clock in the morning, I went to my, my room because I, that's when the, the flight arrived and got to the home. I it took a shower. So I'm putting on my dhoti and there's a little girl. She didn't even knock on the door. She just came right in while I'm putting on my dhoti. <laughs> And she handed me something. And it, with such enthusiasm, I understood it was important to her. So I, I said, you know, thank you. Let me finish putting on my dhoti, if you don't mind. Okay, okay. And she closed the door. And I looked at it. It was, it was a string of beads of different colors and different sizes. But it was so meaningful to her that she just couldn't wait. So it's, it's still here. That gesture, because it was it was service of spontaneous love to make an offering to someone that's visiting them. 
the spiritual master of their parents is visiting, and it, it wasn't their home, it was just in their vicinity. Anyway, so, better to find out what's what's a suitable gift to offer, but if even if you just offer something that's not even so suitable, you just offer with love, whatever it is. So those are two sadhu sangha principles. You do with sadhus what sadhus do. That's what how Prabhupada started the Hare Krishna movement. That's what, how we can carry on the Hare Krishna movement. They came with Prabhupada and chanted, and danced, and took prasadam and heard him speak. They sometimes didn't understand, and sometimes they understood, and sometimes, sometimes. And then some service. Even it, it doesn't have to be proximate, it can just be, you know, meaningful service, something that in your heart, this is a service I'm doing. So whatever we can resonate with sadhus, that is sangha, sadhu yeah, sangha. Yeah, yeah. What gifts do you have? Take the, take one of those gifts and give give it, as a, express it as an offering to a sadhu or sadhus, plural. That's sadhu sangha. Receiving and giving, right? That's loving exchange, receiving and giving. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay. Thank you for uh, clarifying on it. I always confuse with always this word sadhu sangha. Thank you for. Okay. I have few, you know. Uh, let, let's see if someone else in the room, because we'll save you for later. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Um, we're talking about uh, the realization of identifying with, with your true self as a soul, ah. you know, which is sounds very attractive. But you know, <laughs> 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 um, um, I was thinking about that uh, nishta stage where someone is fixed in devotion and he's not necessarily disturbed by uh, dualities in the material world. Um, a nice place. <laughs> Just thinking about it. <laughs> but uh, Go there. Uh, sometimes I feel like, um, of course, this is definitely a stage that somebody ha has to invest some energy and practice uh, to get there. Uh, but uh, I noticed that the, the, the most difficult thing or the most difficult realization for someone to get there is, the, is wanting it, is to desire that. Well, y yes and no, mm. yes, yeah. but the, you know the, the it's the desire is concomitant with the soul. It's of the soul. We all want one of the things we all want universally. We all want to be happy. We want others to be happy, but you know we want to be happy. We want to be happy. Others being happy makes me happy, but I want to be happy. That's a barometer. So we want to be happy. So the problem is not we don't have the desires. It's we're 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 covered by other conceptions of what happiness is, or other conceptions of who I am. The problem is that, so. It's the the pro I, it's just putting a pin on the problem is having the desire. That yes, the desire for what? And you're refining that statement of what? And you, then you go to the modes of nature and, and conditioning and coverings and guna and karma and you know we're way over there. So this is where the sadhu sangha principle comes in because we're in forgetful state, but sadhu sangha can help us become remembering what we've forgotten. Exactly what Prabhupada said. That's sadhu sangha. And then we, we, we take it, we receive it, this encouragement, and then we forget it because we're unsteady. Back to the dira stage that you mentioned, or nishta stage.
It's innate, but covered. So we could, we need we need good practice, follow standards that are going to make us or help us become pure, and good association that keeps us on track. And you know, making our choices that's in that same alignment. Regular hearing and chanting makes the heart pure. Okay. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, so I'll try to make sense of what I'm trying to convey here. Um, so for me, I'm. I'll kind of reveal a secret. I kind of feel like I'm. I'm kind of dull headed, <laughs> and uh, you know, a lot, a lot of times when we get in these discussions and these big philosophical points, I just can't even handle it. And so, but at the same time, I feel like. You know, I try to capture the essence. Like yeah, what, that's what, it. what we're learning is that's that it, that's it. chanting the mantra, kirtan, dancing, serving with our, you know, full love and, you know, devotion. But, I mean. But? Yeah, is that. So you gave this example of the little girl and the beads. Yeah. So for me, <clears throat> you know, sometimes we'll see that, you know, devotees will get into this big, like, philosophical way, like, that's oh, okay. Well, the little girl represents this, and the purple beads represents this, and the orange bead represents, and the strand in the middle represents. I don't know like, anybody that's like that. <laughs> these <laughs> these I don't know philosophical like that. points, but Those for are, me, that's I not under- philosophical. That's just poetic. <laughs> that's not philosophy. Yeah. Okay. So my understanding. You know, well, I'm chan- like you. Look at this. Is this this event happened maybe 20 years ago? And it's right. It's right here, because it touched. It not you know. It's like the 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 gift wasn't the thing. It's the enthusiasm, and it's simplicity and sincerity. The love with which this. this she couldn't wait. <laughs> I put my doty on, man. <laughs> That's what I feel like the real essence. That's what what we should be uh, looking for in Krishna consciousness. So, you're like me. You know, I I also have an attraction for the innuendos of subtleties. I like Jiva. He's he's what Jiva Goswami and Bhakti Siddhanta are two heroes for me, and they speak w- in ways that I can't really, you know. <laughs> I can't fathom, but my practical subjective experience is it ele- it's consciousness elevating. It takes me to a place that's really a, a lovely place. I don't really understand how it happened, exactly what it is, but I can feel just by hearing from them. It's elevating. And it's not like a challenge to you know, what it, the terminology and concepts and how does the, juggle, the puzzle pieces all fit together. I mean, that's fun, too. That's part of my upbringing is, you know, growing up as a kid is still with me. But the essence is the, is the simplicity and purity of heart. And that's the, that's the real power. And so there are acharyas, like Bhaktisiddhanta and Jiva Goswami, that they, 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 they carry that simplicity and purity. At the same time, there's refinement, and I, I find this awesome. It lifts me too. So, not that I understand everything, but I, I, I repeatedly, Prabhupada would say, try to understand. Then he would say the point 10 times, try to understand. Okay. So do that. If you don't understand, that's okay. But you're being purified because you're taking an instruction to heart. The gift of the acharyas to you. Please take it. I don't understand. That's okay. Hear it again. It's, it's just do that. Because it's the gift that, that they're giving. You're not you, your receiver may not be, you know, the best receiver in town. That's okay. The signal is it's transcendental signal. 
go as best you can. And gradually, gradually. The goal is not scholarship. The, the goal is the relationship. That's what I want to bring up. Because then I got thinking, you know, because, you know, if we make it to the spiritual world, at some point, See you there. we're not going to be there philosophizing, right? We're just oh, going to be enjoying no, wait, the wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, it's not you're philosophizing. Don't don't give it a bad name. No, no, no. I didn't mean that. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. Oh, they're, they're, the uh, elegant Vaishnavas are discussing elegant topics. Ah, yes. It's not just philosophizing. Yeah, I, I didn't mean like that. Okay, I'm just Sorry. getting back at you. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> editing, I guess, is a better word to say. I'm editing. I mean, look at our the, the 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 many, not all, many of the most exalted. What was it like to be, you know, amongst the six Goswamis and having Kr Krishna Kata together? There's Sadhu Sangha. Our nice Sadhu Sangha question over here. When when I just sharing. Nineteen seventy. I went to Vrindavan in 1970. And one of the places we went was Radhadamadar Temple to see Prabhupada's rooms, to see Radhadamadar and all the all deities on the altar. And it looked different then, very different then. Because Guru Das, Prabhupada's disciple Guru Das, took us around to places. And in the back, you know, you used to be able to circumambulate, circumambulate around the temple because behind the deities there was a walking place. And he pointed out, underneath this stone that went across behind the deities, that was cool because it gets really hot in Vrindavan in the summer. So the six Goswamis would sit, he told us, what do I know? They sat there because it was cool and they would discuss topics of Krishna, even in the hot of the heat of the summer. Now it's all covered over, and it's all you, can, you don't know any of that stuff now. But you know they were intimately associated, discussing topics of Krishna, which then in turn they wrote books about. And they, they had the they were had a great time, sadhu sangha, associating with one another, discussing topics of Krishna, and getting realizations, experiences that they were sharing, and then putting them in writing and really nice. So here's one. Amongst the six Goswamis, the senior most was Sanatana Goswami. Sanatana Goswami, among other things, wrote a commentary on the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. He gave the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam commentary to Jiva Goswami to edit and if he found modifications needed to make it more intelligible, etc., etc., and Jiva Goswami accepted as a service. I don't know if he did any editing, but in addition to his editing service that he was asked to do, he wrote a commentary on his commentary. Vaishnava Toshani something. I forget the, the other word that goes with it. And it you know it's 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 elegant. He's enjoying not just wordplay, he's enjoying topics of Krishna and sharing them with others and sharing them with us. If, anyway. So think of it that way. Rather than you know, it's 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 some esoteria that I don't understand. It's sound vibration that's purifying. And he's enjoying it. He wants you to also enjoy. It's just like, you know, what Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur was writing here. Why is he talking about seeing Maya anyways? Because you have to diagnose the disease before you can see the Supreme Person. You need that disease diagnosis and the remedy diagnosis of the disease so you can see the Supreme Person and enjoy his sweetness by direct experience. That was That's his commentary. Okay, anything else? Or time is ticking. I think we should close up. You get the last question, Mataji. 
Oh, you get the next to the last question. Your mom. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh. Maharaj, uh, can you please uh, help me uh, be more spiritual in my activities? Be more spiritual. Like more. Um, what would you like me to do to help you become more spiritual? Uh. Should I encourage you? Should I kick you? Should I <laughs> scold you? What will what will help you become more spiritual? Bless you. Blessings. <laughs> it's, re it's a relationship. It's not one way, it's two ways. But you're asking the question is, is one of the ways, one of the two-way exchanges. So, because you heard this story of this little girl with the, the, the it was a string of beads that were different colors, different sizes, etc. So, make offerings from your heart to those who you feel your heart is open to and you can receive from. It doesn't have to be something fantastic, significant, you know, spectacular, God's gift to the world. Just from your heart, you make some simple offering. Here's, here's a for example. For example, you cook. Does your son cook or you cook? You cook. No, when you cook, cook with devotion. In Chaitanya Bhagavat, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, there are four places where I always come. And one of those places is where Mother Sachi is making offerings because she's offering it to her son. So he comes. She doesn't see him, but he comes. You get the idea? So it's something you do every day. Probably more than once every day. So do do that with, with the, the mood of I'm making an offering. It's just some, some the same activity with a, a mood of devotion, like this little girl offering the little beads. And here's here it is. It doesn't have to be, you know, something special. But from your heart. That's bhakti. And then when that happens, the, the, the heart, the door of the heart is open and you start to receive something, which is what you're asking for. It's two ways. Simple. Really simple. Please take it. Take the mercy. Okay. Over here. Hare Krishna Maharaj, just for continuation of that same thing, Which but, same but thing? I have another question though, Maharaj. The Sadhusanga question? No, 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 Maharaj. Sorry, about whatever we are offering. So, normally uh, we, we are listening and we are meditating on Krishna and we do worship and all these. So, suppose if my mind is more on listening and meditating on it rather than... More on, more on what? Listening the stories of Krishna. Okay. And meditating on it. That's nice. So? But not on real worship and uh, offerings, food and all that. So. My I don't follow what you're saying. I hope somebody else does. Okay. My question is, there are different ways of serving Krishna. Yes. I understand. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Yes. So one way is... Be present. When you're doing this, you do this. When you're doing that, you do that. But if my mind is more on... Oh, the mind. Sorry. <laughs> because I'm more connected, maybe. Connect your mind with your, the activity that you're doing and do the activity from your heart and align the mind with the activity and your heart. It's an instrument. So it's okay to concentrate on whatever we are connected or is it... Please do it. Not now when it's okay. Please do that. But the concentration is with a qualifier. It's with, this is for you. Do you know the, the, we discussed this. Do you know what the essential, Parivasa Sutra of 
Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu is? The definition of bhakti. You know the definition of bhakti? Anyabhilasya Jashunyam. You know that verse? Jnana karma jnavratam. That's what bhakti isn't. We discussed this. So, anukulyena krishna anushilanam. Anukulyena means accepting. Anukulyena krishna anushilanam. Shilana means behavior or conduct, or what you do. Anu means following. Anushilanam. Following that which is pleasing to Krishna. Krishna anushilanam. Accept that which is pleasing to Krishna. Make your life like that. And when you're doing each thing, make your, use that principle because it's the essence, it's the heart of the heart of bhakti. That Krishna is to be pleased. And you're moving, you're aligning, your, back to this mind question, you're aligning your mind and your heart with your behavior. The body, the mind, the heart. With one purpose, Krishna is to be pleased. And you practice, practice. You'll get distracted and, you know, you know, your your conditioning will come out. But just keep practicing. Faithfully. Faithfully means I'm confident this, this this will take me to where I want to go. You know where you want to go. But you're just not there yet. To keep practicing. In the in the manner just described. You'll get there. Certain. Now, you know, don't take my word for it. You can take Rupa Goswami's word for it. His word is good. Shri the Prabhupada Ki. Yeah. Yeah.